Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So it's time to have a look at some of the questions just to see if we have got the lesson right or not. So let us look at question number one. So question number one. State the volume of air remaining in the lungs after a normal breathing. So functional residual capacity is the volume of air that remains in lungs after a normal expiration or what you call as a normal breathing. So how do we calculate this functional residual capacity? This is nothing but the residual volume that is the volume which is left over in the lungs after a forceful breathing. So that is residual volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. This is the volume which you would have uh, given out if you would have done a forceful respiration. So that means it is RV plus ERV. Now normally the expiratory reserve volume the value of this is around 1000 to 1500 milliliter for a healthy adult human being and the value of residual volume is approximately around 1100 to 1500 milliliter so that means if we try to calculate the value of frc this will range between 2500 to 3000 milliliter so this would be the approximate value of functional residual capacity for a healthy adult. Question number two. Diffusion of gases occurs in the alveolar region only and not in the other parts of respiratory system. Why? Okay. So if you talk about the different parts of the respiratory system, the exchange of gases occur only at the alveoli. That's because for all other parts, the gases are just moving for one, from one part to the another part. But there is no exchange taking place. But if you look at the alveoli, in the alveoli is the only region where oxygen is given in return carbon dioxide is received so exchange of gases occur here so there are three four things involved here first is exchange of gases occur at the alveoli secondly the thin alveolar membrane which uh, supports the process of diffusion so the thin alveolar membrane is suitable for that purpose Again, the permeability of the alveolar membrane, that is the al alveolar membrane is permeable for the gases to pass across it. So, if you consider other parts of the respiratory system, they are not structured in this fashion. Moreover, it is quite close by to the, quite close to the blood capillaries or the blood vessels, whatever you call it. So if you see for other parts of the respiratory system, whether you talk about the nostrils or you talk about the nasopharynx, for all of them, all these conditions are not satisfied. So that means the uh, alveoli are structured in this fashion that exchange of gases take place only in the alveolar region. Question number three. What will be the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmospheric air compared to those in the alveolar air? Okay, so in this case, you have been given options. Now you have to select which is the right option. So if you say the atmospheric air, that is the atmospheric air is somewhere here and this is the alveolar air. So this is atmospheric air and here you have the alveolar air. Now how does the air moves? So the oxygen, movement of oxygen occurs in this fashion. That means the partial pressure of oxygen is more in the atmosphere when compared to the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. So partial pressure of oxygen in the atmospheric pressure uh, air will be more and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be less. So partial pressure of oxygen higher and carbon dioxide lesser. This would be the right option because the movement of these gases occur as per the pressure gradient. They move from region of higher pressure towards lower pressure. Next question. 
what is the effect of partial pressure of carbon dioxide on oxygen transport now as we have discussed that low low partial pressure of carbon dioxide favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin and high concentration favors the dissociation of oxyhemoglobin that is why let us suppose this is the alveoli and let us say these are the tissues so in the tissues the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more and in the alveoli partial pressure of carbon dioxide is less now here partial pressure of carbon dioxide is less so it favors the formation of oxyhemoglobin so oxy so oxygen combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin it passes through in the form of oxyhemoglobin through the blood when it reaches the tissues where the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more the oxyhemoglobin dissociates and this dissociation release the oxygen and that is how oxygen is supplied to the tissue so oxygen are transported from alveoli to tissues that is how partial pressure of carbon dioxide have an impact on oxygen transport question number 5 what happens to the respiratory process in a man going up a now what happens when somebody is going up now as the altitude increases the availability of oxygen decreases now this decrease in the availability of oxygen is because of two reasons now when the avail this is because of two reasons the first reason is that oxygen availability in the atmosphere decreases with increase in height so as you go higher the availability of oxygen in the atmosphere itself decreases now when there is less oxygen in the atmosphere it is quite obvious that even if even though you breathe in air the air will not be that rich in oxygen so the oxygen availability in your blood will decrease so this is one reason what is the other reason that the oxygen availability in blood decreases that's because when you are climbing up the hill you are uh, actually putting in a lot of effort you are actually putting in a lot of energy to climb the hill as a result the respiration rate increases the need the oxygen consumption by the body also increases so oxygen consumption in the body increases while climbing right so the two things these two things together results in the decrease in oxygen availability in blood one is outside oxygen availability decreases with height secondly inside the oxygen consumption increases due to more energy being required to climb as a result inside the body the need of oxygen increases and outside the body the availability of oxygen decreases so both these th things together results in less oxygen availability in the blood secondly when the oxygen availability is less in the blood what will happen the rate of breathing will increase now when oxygen is less inside we will tend to breathe in more and more air thinking that okay we'll get at least some more oxygen so as a result the breathing rate increases now another example in this context would be how do why do we yawn you would have often seen that when you feel sleepy you tend to yawn so why does that happen you open your mouth wide open and then you tend to feel i mean that is how you do when you tend to feel sleepy that's because when you are feeling sleepy or drowsy your body is not active enough to breathe in properly so you are actually not breathing in properly so the body inside the blood inside is not getting enough oxygen as required so as a result it sends a signal to the brain which in turn causes you to yawn so when you yawn you actually open your mouth wide open and you take in a lot of air at a time so you actually compensate for the uh, lack of oxygen which is there inside the blood so yawning happens to compensate for the less amount of oxygen which is there inside your blood thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again